nosaltres, representants democràtics del poble de Catalunya, en el lliure exercici del dret d'autodeterminació i d'acord amb el mandat rebut de la ciutadania de Catalunya, constituïm la República Catalana com a estat independent i sobirà de dret democràtic i social. Era un camino trazado, marcado, explicado, además explicado en sede parlamentaria, de forma muy transparente, muy clara, no, 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 no fue ninguna conspiración para ninguna rebelión. Fueron todos actos parlamentarios, actos eh, abiertos, transparentes, eh, e invitamos a la gente de Cataluña a ejercer un derecho que tenemos, que es el derecho a la autodeterminación. Esta nación se ha alzado para decidirlo todo de una vez por todas y todos juntos. Nadie nos podrá parar. I think in Catalonia we clearly see an example of a form of nationalism that is fueled and reinforced by a very uncompromising and a very polarizing uh, attitude of the of the central state. Y hoy lo han constatado. Sabían que el referéndum era ilegal, improcedente e imposible. Pero decidieron seguir adelante y promover un verdadero ataque al Estado de Derecho y al modelo democrático sin que le importase nada ni nadie. Los Estados tienen miedo. Uh, tienen miedo no a la idea de una Cataluña independiente en sí, porque la independencia ha sabido en el pasado y va a haber en el futuro, sino que Cataluña como síntoma de algo que no les gusta y que viene, que es un nuevo mundo. I'm a reindeer herder uh, and on this island. I'm, that's my work and that's the only thing I do for a living. Yeah. It's, like a, it's like a love story. <laughs> I moved from a, a totally reindeer area with a lot of paid reindeer people. The reindeer was always the thing we talked about. And then when you move to this coast area, you have to pee, you have to like forget it. My Sammy heart really cried because I'm alone. I haven't any other guys or people around me. It's a slowly dead. It's a slowly dead. It's it's sad uh, without the reindeer. You just look at this coast area. There used to be like coast Sami people, fisher, farmers, speaking 100% Sami for like 100 years ago. All gone, nobody left.
we have always been like getting used to everything because we have to get used to everything. I'm afraid of the, 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 the future. I'm really afraid of the future. I grew up in Sweden, in a reindeer herding family. So for me it was totally natural to be a Sami, growing up with reindeers and following the migration of reindeers from Swedish side during winter to the Norwegian side in the summertime. In the village where I come from, all my friends were Sami and reindeer herding. So in one way there couldn't be any different classes or different levels in that small society because everybody was Sami. But of course, when we leave our own village and came out, and then we heard that we were not like other, everybody else, that we were Sami. Now I can see things that was, in one way, from grown-ups towards kids that wasn't accurate, done from teachers and things. But at that moment, you accepted it, because this is how it should be. You knew that you were Sami, and you felt proud of it, and you knew that when you were proud of being a Sami, those others they didn't like it. But that strengthened you as a person. The situation is changing, of course, and in my perspective it's changing to the better, because today the governments are looking at the Arctic areas more, the Arctic has become in focus. So in many cases the national states see the need to get to the resources, both mining, perhaps in some areas it's oil and gas, you have to have places for wind power, man wind power plants. So there's a need to look upon the rights, to strengthen the indigenous rights. In terms of rights, of course, Norway is the country where the government has taken the biggest responsibility to secure the rights of the Sami people. You can see it by ratifying the ELO Con Convention of 169, also doing a big effort to strengthen the languages, There's all three Sami languages in Norway, and you can see it by the power that is given to the Sami parliament. If the government are planning any new laws that interfere or has something to do with the Sami way of life, then they have to, to contact the Sami parliament. The Sami parliament opened in uh, 1989, but before we, we come to that, it was a Sami rights struggle uh, that started in um, the early 70s when the state um, decided to, to, to build a hydropower dam uh, in the Alta Godogeno river. And the Sami people uh, started to protest against that because they saw that this project will influence uh, the Sami culture in a very um, hard way. And then we have um, uh, in recent time some windmill parks uh, we have one in, in the South Sami area, uh, it's, when it's done it's going to be the biggest windmill park in, in Europe and that will um, affect uh, the reindeer husbandry business in that area. For me I'm, I'm thinking about like longer, like in, in 50 years maybe, or, or 20 years, what are the reindeer doing? How do they manage the, 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 the herd? Do they lose it? Because when, it, when you are kidding with the nature like this, you are like uh, making... It's like a wheel, uh, the year for a reindeer. When you cut the wheel, you have to find something to, to repair it. And what can you find when you 
and they have destroyed it. So the, the wheel is not uh, a circle anymore. Sometimes you need to tell the truth. Sometimes you have to say, yes, it is the reindeer. Without the reindeer, the Sami is gone. The story that is told amongst the Sami people is that the people came after the reindeers hunting, living in small family groups, and further and further being pressed further and further north by the farmers coming from the south. That is Johan Turi that says, it's a famous Sami writer that said that the Sami people were forced to go so far north as possible until the sea stopped them to go further north. I grew up with that history, listening to the stories that the elders of my family told me about oppression, about how our lands were taken, how the Sami as an autonomous people lost their own autonomous functions, and that the Sami became more and more dependent of the mainstream society. The state tried to as uh, assimilate the Sami into the mainstream society. The assimilation process destroyed a lot of self-confidence, destroyed culture and also was really destructive when it came to the to the survival of the Sami culture as a whole. But then with the Sami political movement you also got this positivity People who really have been struggling to make the Sami languages survive and the clothing. And then you, now you can find um, training uh, for those who want to make their own Sami costumes. If you want to learn the Sami language, yeah, it's, there are a lot of possibilities to do that. We are building up strong Sami institutions, make it easier to be a Sami today than it was many years ago, many uh, Sami villages is taking back their culture and coming up with the, like trying to learn the language, reconstructing their traditional clothing and yeah, and are more proud to be a Sami than before. So they are taking back their Sami identity in a way. <laughs> No mun jahkan tahtele takuhana te tälle autjuntan perustumme munjahten mahalinen mahput ja mahti tämä ei enniki mahta. Nuora haalirit kirja kaufti korru ja haalirit. Annetan arka päivässä meitä. Ja no mun jahkan tälle meitä nähten haaliritten ja jome identiteetti. Ja <laughs> In all the times we were pretty much alone in this area, so we controlled the areas. But when the states drew their boundaries and when people moved up to, to our areas, then we became a minority. But of course we can like, make stronger Sami region 
where we have like solutions for Sami self-determinations that we manage Sami land and, and have management control over what kind of industry that's going to be developed. That's of course our goal. But we see it's very hard because it's a lot of interests in the Arctic region. I'm not a politician, but of course, if we can make anything to keep our land without this mining, this windcraft shit, if, if anything can be done, then I'm in. If it's a new country, if it's a something, whatever, whatever comes. But I'm, I'm so sad that nobody works on our side. It's, it's from time to time uh, uh, discussions going on about how life would be easier if, if the Sami people were not living in three or four, di four different countries. But I think that it's quite unthinkable, regional autonomy uh, going on. I, I think that's totally uh, unthinkable. Uh, we have a, probably one of the most peaceful regions in, in the world. And those kind of, of discussions, I, I don't know who should start those discussions even because it's, it's totally unthinkable. Most Samis don't have the same uh, understanding of borders as maybe the majority society because we kind of look into those borders and see that well they kind of they're unnatural because they weren't supposed to be there. I identify people from the Sami area on the Finnish side. They're my relatives or they're, I know that they're Sami. So I think of them as Sami before I think of them as being citizens of Finland. It's just a question about how willing the Nordic states, the governments are to accept that, okay, well, these territories, they are in fact the territories of the Sami people. I think the Sami nation exists already. The solution is within the Sami society itself because this is a people who want to be a people and who want to have a say. You would need to have a lot of much more people to be, call yourself as a nation. But we have our own flag, we have our own national day, we have our own, have our own anthem. So in one way, it's what you define as a nation.